okay welcome all today's topic is complementary symmetry push pull amplifier my name is suresh lecturer in ac i am going to teach the subject electronic device and circuit which is a common subject for both instrumentation and ece branches of diploma sbtec telangana subject code is ei303 and today's topic is complementary symmetry push pull amplifier in the previous lessons we have learnt about the class a power amplifier with resistive load and we have seen the circuit diagram operation we have calculated the efficiency of the class a power amplifier with resistive load and also we have seen the class a power amplifier with transformer load circuit diagram and uh, we have calculated the efficiency because of some disadvantages of class a we have gone to the class b power amplifier in which the first circuit class b push pull power amplifier we have learned about the circuit operation and calculated the efficiency of the class b push pull power amplifier so coming to the today's topic complementary symmetry push pull amplifier <coughs> figure shows the circuit of a complementary symmetry symmetry sorry class b push pull amplifier the circuit employs two transistors one is npn and another one is pnp from the figure and the symbols of the transistors we can see one is npn and another one is p and p it requires two dc power supplies to bias the transistors suitably two dc power supplies plus vcc and here minus vcc you can see the two dc supplies the two transistors are operated in class b mode by adjusting the bias such that the q point corresponding to cutoff points read this line again the two transistors are operated in class b mode what do you mean by class b mode from the classification of power amplifiers based on the conduction angle theta we have classified the power amplifiers in four categories class a class b class c and class ab class a operates uh, for full conduction that is theta is equal to 360 degrees the class a amp power amplifier will conduct in case of class b it is only 180 degrees that is theta is equal to 180 degrees that means um, the transistors are operating only for the off cycle either it can be positive off cycle or negative off cycle so this complementary symmetry push pull amplifier the two transistors npn and pnp transistors are operated in class b mode by adjusting the bias such that the q point this is the important point here q point the q point corresponding to top points if you can remember the output graph that is vce versus ic there we have drawn the curves for different ib values and we have drawn the dc load line and ac load line there we got the q point vc q comma ic q so we have to adjust that q point for corresponding the operation of class b amplifier thus with no signal both the transistors are cut off and no collector current flows without any input signal we have here no character current flows because from the input we have supplied the correct sorry capacitor which will block the dc and without any signal there is no dc signal will be amplified and given to the output that leads to the that leads to the power dissipation which is a very very disadvantage in case of class a amplifier now moving on to the circuit diagram first uh, observe the circuit 
here we have from the input side we have source signal vs and a capacitor and followed by a resistor and then we have two transistors supplied with the same input signal in case of push pull we have that is center tap transformer we have used the center tap transformer if you remember from previous lesson we have used the center tap transformer which will divide the input signal into two equal signals with 180 degrees out of phase that will be given to the two transistors there we have used the same transistors NPN and NPN only one will act as a push factor and another will act as a pull factor that means during any half cycle only one transistor will be in on stage on state and another will be in cutoff state but here see we are using two different transistors that is complementary and symmetry that means two transistors of NPN and PNP and we are supplying the same source, source signal same input we are applying to the two transistors and the outputs of transistors are joined to a transformer primary and the secondary of transformer is attached to a low that is load speaker right and we have two currents here IC1 and IC2 if you see in the primary of transformer the IC1 direction and IC2 direction they are opposite opposite to each other right now going to the operation and uh, circuit details first see the term complementary arises from the fact that the one transistor is PNP type and another is of NPN type as we know but the name why we have given it as complementary and symmetry pull amplifier the complement here means two different transistors one is complement of another one that is PNP and another one is NPN they have symmetry why the symmetry word is used because both are made with the same material and technology and have the same maximum rating though the terminal NPN and PNP they are different but the material used to manufacture those transistors NPN or PNP are same and the technology is same so different values will have different parameters will have same values but with the direction is different one one will have the current coming into the transistor and one other will have the same current will flow out of the transistor that is only the sign is different sign direction or sign is different the important point to note is that no center tap transformer is employed as we can see from the circuit diagram we didn't use any center trap transformer in the input but we have used the transformer in the output <coughs> however an ordinary output transformer that is not center tap is employed for impedance matching to get maximum output across the load which why we have used the transformer at output for impedance matching as we know the most important uh, advantage while using the transformer is the impedance matching to get the maximum output across the load but there is some disadvantages by using transformer as we have already seen that is the cost and it will become bulky now see the working of the um, this circuit the input signal appears across the terminals AB during the positive half cycle of the input signal the transistor Q1 NPN conducts current while transistor Q2 PNP does not conduct as it is at cutoff state right see the circuit diagram the Q1 is above transistor and Q2 is the below transistor 
q1 has n p n and the p terminal is at base if the p terminal is given the positive then the resultant junction will become power bias and the transistor will be in on state so the input is ac signal so it will have positive of cycle and negative of cycle preferably we use the sinusoidal wave so during the positive half cycle let us consider during the positive half cycle what will happen the positive half cycle positive values will be applied up to the base of the n p n transistor so the p terminal will be given positive voltage because of that the junction p n junction will have forward bias and will be it will be in forward state on state the same voltage the same positive voltage is applied again to the npn that is q2 transistor and the below transistor q2 q2 is a n sorry q2 is p n p p and n is the base here so n is means negative the negative terminal n terminal is given to the positive voltage which will drive the junction into the reverse bias so the transistor will be in off stage that is the q2 pnp will be in off state and npn will be in on state in the positive half cycle of the input waveform okay next during the negative half cycle of the input signal the transistor q2 conducts and the while the transistor q1 does not okay this is vice versa during the negative half cycle what will happen the negative voltage is applied to the p terminal of the base of q1 the negative voltage is applied to the p terminal of the base of a q1 that is npn transistor so that the junction will be in reverse bias so the transistor will not conduct that is it is in off state right the q1 is in off state during negative off cycle what about q2 in the q2 we have n terminal that is n is to the base that is negative and the input is negative half cycle so what will happen the negative voltage are applied to the negative terminal which will lead to the bias forward bias condition so q1 will be in off state and q2 will be in on state during the negative half cycle so positive half cycle q1 conducts q2 will be on off state and during the negative cycle q1 will be off state and q2 will be in on state hence npn transistor up amplifies the positive half cycle whereas pnp transistor amplifies the negative half cycle okay the amplified signal appears across the primary which is transferred to the secondary on the load right the amplified signal the transistor will be in amplification mode and they will the output the output is amplified and given to the primary of the transformer and the whatever the output we are getting at the primary is transferred to the secondary of the transformer which is connected to the load that is load speaker so like that the input signal is amplified and applied across the load advantages this circuit does not require center tap transformer right its weight size and cost are less so lesser number of transformers we to less cost less weight and less size equal and opposite input signal voltages are not required right this is important because why we are using center tap transformer in the previous uh, circuit that is push pull amplifier because we need two signals with 180 degrees out of phase but here we are getting the same signal but we are using different transistors that is complementary transistors pnp and npn so we no need to use the center tap transformer at the input driver stage is not necessary but this this particular 
amplifier we don't need any driver stage disadvantage it is difficult to get a pair of transistors having exactly same characteristics that is important exactly no two transistors will have exactly same characteristics though they manufacture at the same time the same company is using the same material there will be a slight very very slight difference so what will happen if there is a very very slight difference because the transistor action because of transistor action it will be amplified though it may be a little value but because of the temperature changes the ic increases it will be double the value will become double and it will keep on increasing because of the amplifier action which will cause the fluctuation or distortion in the resultant value it means the resultant expected values we may not get because of this that means no other two transistors will have the same care exactly same characteristics the circuit requires two power supplies positive supply and negative supply right in the upper circuit we have plus vcc and in the lower circuit we have minus vcc the output is distorted due to crossover distortion this is important here it's a disadvantage because output is distorted due to crossover distortion now just to see conditions to avoid thermal runaway in a power transistor actually what, what which type of transistor we are using in these power circuits power amplifier circuits we are using the power transistors the power transistors will have higher values of power and dissipation capabilities though we have selected a particular transistor which have dissipation capability in the required range sometimes it may happen because of the overheating of the transistor it may go into the thermal runaway condition thermal runaway condition first we have to see what is the thermal runaway condition and why you need to avoid it thermal means heat if we increase the heat that is the temperature as we know the saturation current leakage current ic naught will double for every 10 degree centigrade rise in the temperature and we know from the equation ic is equal to beta ib plus ic naught which the significant change in the ic naught will result in change in ic which will leads to again increase in the temperature which will lead to again increase in the ic naught and ic it will be a loop like a circle loop which will have the multiplying effect and finally it may lead to the thermal runaway that means the transistor may going to burn away because of the heat higher temperatures so we need to avoid that condition the excess heat produced at the collector based junction may even burn and destroy the transistor this situation is called thermal runaway of the transistor see that the excess heat produced at the collector based junction in the end that means at the receiver side at the output side collector based junction may even burn and destroy the transistor this situation is called thermal runaway the required condition to avoid the thermal runaway is the rate at which the heat is released the rate at which the heat is released at the collector junction must not exceed the rate at which the heat can be dissipated this is understand that it is the limit where uh, the transistor will dissipate the heat the heat generated at that point at that junction should be less than the heat can be dissipated at that junction the same junction <laughs> if the heat generated is less the heat dissipated is more that will, will be in safe condition but if the heat dissipated is less and the heat generated that means heat limit if it crosses the limit dissipation capability limit then the transistor will burn away 
so that is represented in the equation that is do do pc by do tj is less than do pd by do tj the capacity at the collector junction the thermal heat generated right the rate at which the heat released at the collector junction heat released at the collector junction is less than the heat that is can be dissipated the capacity right the dissipation capability should be more but the heat generated should be less so that it will be easily dissipate that can be represented as again you can write it as do pc by do tj should be less than 1 by theta so where tj is the junction temperature in degree centigrade where pd is the power in watts dissipated at the collector junction and theta is the thermal resistance of transistor where theta is equal to do tj by do pd see that in the from the equation we have theta is equal to do tj by do pd temperature by dissipation uh, capacity that is degree centigrade per watt that is the uh, units for this theta thermal resistance next condition 2 it have been found that if the operating point is so chosen that operating point q point is so chosen that vc should be less than or equal to vcc by 2 the rate of increase of pc with ic is not large and thermal runaway problem will not be there this can be understood from the graph that where the q point is selected that is vcu q comma icq a q point vce value should be chosen such that should be less than or equal to vcc that is the maximum stable that means saturation value input bias and it is the saturation value for the other voltages vcc by 2 half of that voltage the vce should be less than or equal to the vcc by 2 then the rate of increase of pc with ic is not large and thermal runaway problem will not be there so these are the two conditions which has to be made in order to function a power transistor in a safe operating mode and the power amplifier circuit also in a good condition now we have seen about the crossover distortion that is the disadvantage of this complementary symmetry push pull amplifier now first we have to see what is distortion and amplitude distortion and different types of distortions first amplitude distortion occurs when the peak values of the signals are attenuated due to a shift in the q point and consequently amplification may not take place over the whole signal cycle this is the definition and representation but if you see the graph you will be understood well circuit diagrams or waveforms sorry if you see the waveforms you can understand amplitude distortion occurs when the peak values of the signal are attenuated that means decreasing due to a shift in the q point and consequently amplification may not take place over the whole signal cycle Amplitude distortion occurs in a amplifier circuit in the following two cases which when when this particular type of distortion will occur that is incorrect biasing of the amplifier circuit and large input signals see the waveforms amplitude distortion due to incorrect biasing first if you observe the waveform on the waveform we have first input signals that is a 0 to peak value and peak value to negative and, and omega t so peak value here is less than that vcc plus vcc and negative vcc in the figure b if you see shifted bias level to high it is not zero that is it is shifted to some positive value bias level too high then the peak value peak portion of the positive half cycle is clipped it means the, the peak 
portion of the positive off cycle is deleted right clipped and the negative off cycle remains the same in case of figure c if you see the bias level is below bias level is too low then the distortion output signal will be the negative half cycle will be clipped some portion of the negative peak half cycle will be clipped if you compare the input signal and this two signals figure b and figure c compare with the figure a that is a distorted signal it is not in the same shape of as input signal right? they are clipped some portions are deleted if the transistor's biasing point is correct the output waveform should have the same shape as that of a input waveform right if the transistor biasing point q point is correct if you choose the q point correctly then the output waveform will be is, as is in same shape with the input waveform if there is insufficient bias and the q point lies in the lower half of the load line then the negative half of the output waveform is clipped right this is if we can remember from the graph that is load line graph the q point lies in the lower half of the load line the q point is shifted to the towards the x axis then the negative half of the output waveform is clipped likewise if there is too much bias and the q point lies in the upper half of the low line then the positive half of the input signal is clipped as shown in figure b right on the low line if the q point is shifted towards the y axis that is upper part then the positive half cycle positive half cycle peak portion will be clipped which leads to the distortion so either of these case that means if it is to the towards the x-axis or in the lower portion or if it is in the upper portion or towards the y-axis then in, there is a distortion in the either negative off cycle or positive off cycle of the waveform which leads to the distortion of the shape of the input waveform and next condition is because of the large signal of the input signal right why the amplitude distortion occurs because of two conditions that is either choosing of the q point is not correct and uh, that is biasing and second one is the large size of the input signal observe the waveform figure def even with the correct biasing voltage level set even if the correct biasing voltage level is set and q point is set it is still possible for the output waveform to become distorted due to a large input signal being amplified by the circuits gain if the applied input is itself is very very large the applied signal is itself very very large then the amplified signal amplified signal will lead, will will have more voltage level peak value is increased compared to the input see the graph figure d e f from the figures we have that is the voltage bias level is set same compared to the input bias level is set at the exactly the middle q point is set at exactly in the middle of the load line so still there is a distortion occurring in the positive half cycle and negative half cycle and the upper portions are clipped off they are cut because of the large input signal the input signal itself reaches to the saturation values that is vcc and minus vcc then the amplified signal will become actually it should become more more than vcc but which is not allowed in the circuit that is the vcc itself a saturation point here so the portions which are above vcc and below vccs in the negative of cycle it is below minus vcc and in the positive of cycle it is above vcc these are clipped off and because of that the shape will 
change step is not same as the input waveform so because of these two conditions the amplitude distortion will occur when the input amplifier becomes too large during some portion of the positive off cycle the transistor saturates and results in the clipping of the positive off cycle as shown in the figure during the some portion of the negative off cycle the input junction becomes reverse bias and results in negative off cycle clipping as shown in figure f to avoid this the maximum value of the input signal must be limited to avoid this the maximum value of the input signal must be limited to a level that will prevent this clipping effect as shown in the figures next is crossover distortion see the waveforms input signal waveform and the output signal waveform and compare the both signals and those dash lines if you see the dotted lines at the two dotted lines between the two dotted lines in the output waveform the value is zero both the transistors are in half state at that portion the transistors are biased at cutoff in class b amplifiers it means when the dc bias voltage is zero the input signal voltage must exceed the barrier voltage before a right it means that when the dc bias voltage is zero input signal voltage must exceed the barrier voltage before a transistor conductor because of this there is a time interval between the positive and negative half cycles of the input signal when neither transistor is conducting as shown in figure g the resulting distortion in the output signal is called crossover distortion right that is in the ideal case we have the cutting voltages for these diodes silicon and germanium will have zero volts but in the practical case they have 0.7 volts for silicon and 0.3 volts for germanium transistors we know these values what happens the transistors are biased at cutoff in the class b amplifiers as we know at the cutoff we have half of the portion that is negative of cycle will be cut off that means only during the positive of cycle one transistor will conduct and during the negative of cycle another transistor will conduct it means that when the dc bias voltage is zero the input signal voltage must exceed the barrier voltage before a transistor conduct right because of this there is a time interval between the positive and negative of cycles of the input signal when neither transistor is conducting as shown in figure the resulting distortion in the output signal is called crossover distortion next moving on to the topic state the necessity of heat sink for a power transistor this is simple topic as we can see it is in single word that is because of heat dissipation the power amplifiers use the active devices that have large power dissipation ratings thus the devices are heated more and more and at a stage the device will be damaged due to the production of large amount of heat across the active devices active device here it is a transistor right the power amplifiers use the active devices that have large power dissipation rating as the devices are heated more and more and at a stage the device will be damaged due to production of large amount of heat across these active devices so what should we do if we do not use any cooling effect any heat sinks then the transistor will become burnt off or it may become damage so in order to avoid the damage one way of cooling the device is by 
increase in the surface area of the transistor what happens if you increase the surface area because that is it will dissipate easily or quickly if you increase the surface area of the transistor the heat more heat dissipation if you dissipate the heat per area per centimeter square will be more so the transistor will cool off quickly but there is some limitation for the surface area because of the space constraint on the circuit thus the heat will escape more easily to surroundings this process thus increase the power rating of the device and hence its life another way of cooling device is by using heat sinks a heat sink is a metallic heat conducting device placed in close contact with a transistor to increase the dissipation capacity of the transistor by reducing the total thermal resistance from the junction to ampere a heat sink is a metallic conducting device placed in close contact with a transistor to increase the dissipation capacity of the transistor by reducing the total thermal resistance from the junction to ambient right if you place a metal on the transistor junctions the more heat is generated at the junction itself the generated temperature will will be transferred to that metallic plate and the heat will be it will be transferred to the ambient surface temperature from that metallic surface easily larger the size of the heat sink smaller will be the thermal resistance thermal resistance theta so remember the theta should be low right if it is low then the transistor will be in good condition so what are the different types of heat sinks available to be mounting on the transistor the shape of the heat sink and size of the heat sink depends upon the heat that it has to be radiated into the surroundings the various types of heat sinks are push on type heat sink metal tab heat sink collector to case heat sink these are the different types first see push on type heat sink shown in figure is a push on type heat sink as the heat sink is pushed onto the transistor case heat radiates more quickly because of the increased surface area of the pins you see this diagrams this picture c this type of heat sink is used for low power transistors of round casing of t0 01 t005 and t0105 etc figure a push on type the transistor we have in the bottom we have transistor and the above we have a metal case that will be pushed on to the top of the transistor if you see the shape of the heat sink the surface area is increased because of that particular shape area will be increased so the heat will develop dissipate easily next is metal tab heat a metal tab is attached to this particular transistor from that the heat will be radiated next collector to case heat sink the base emitter collector of this particular uh, transistor above that we have a collector connected to case these are the different types of heat sinks available in the present scenarios to dissipate the heat from the transistor junctions in the metal tab heat sink is shown in a power tab transistor which has a metal tab in it to work as a heat sink this metal tab is usually fastened to the chassis of equipment and hence it quickly escapes from the transistor to the chassis chassis of the circuit old circuit or the equipment collector case large power transistor will have the collector connected directly to the case to escape heat easily as possible this type of heat sink is shown in figure these transistors are to be mounted over heat sinks of this type that have cooling fins with flat surface with suitable holes to mount the transistor on the 
heat sink while mounting the transistor and ins an insulator is to be placed between the transistor casing and the heat sinks as the collector is the metal case itself t03 t06 6 type of packages requires this type of arrangement heat sink compound silicon grease is used to improve the effectiveness of heat sinks these are the different uh, parameters and uh, things we have to take care of during the arranging of these heat sinks the transistors have to be mounted over heat sinks of the type that you have cooling fins with a flat surface with suitable holes to mount the transistor on the heat sink and next is there is an insulator it should be placed between the transistor casing and heat sink if we place the insulator the dissipation will be very very effective and the metal sink whatever we connected to dissipate the heat will not correct will not directly in contact with the transistor which will not affect the transistor action and the circuit will be in good condition otherwise if you do not use the insulator then the metal contact will be in contact with the transistors and there is a chance of short circuiting the terminals either base to collector or collector to base and emitter which will lead to the damage of the circuit and heat sink compound generally silicon grease is the material we use to improve the effectiveness of heat sink next topic is classified tuned amplifiers which will we see in the tomorrow's class so in today we have completed these topics just quickly go through the all the topics once for preparation today we have seen the complementary symmetry push pull amplifier from the name complementary we use npn and pnp transistors that is two transistors q1 and q2 but they should have the exact same characteristics same values symmetry means that means same values complementary means one is npn and another one is pnp and we have seen the circuit diagram in that we do not use any so in the circuit <coughs> we do not use any comp uh, center type transformer for uh, same voltage with different that is 100 degrees out of phase signal but here we use two different transistors that is npn and pnp and we have used one single normal type of transformer at the receiving end that is at the collector end to match the imprints matching and to drive the loudspeaker and we have seen the explaining of working and uh, transistors working of this complementary symmetry push pull amplifier we have seen the advantage and in the disadvantage mainly we have seen the crossover distortion then we have gone through the thermal runaway condition that is further if we do not decrease and do not uh, en enter the thermal runaway condition then the transistor will be in safe if it enters into thermal runaway condition then there is no escaping it leads to the damaging of transistor transistor so in this particular type of power transistor that heat dissipation is more so the dissipated heat should be less than the capacity of, of the transistor which will have the yeah, dissipation capacity that is the in the formula if we represent dou pc by dou tj which should be less than dou pd by dou tj and we have the theta that is thermal resistance which is equal to dou tj by dou pd and we have another condition to avoid this thermal runaway that is pc should be less than or equal to the pcc by 2 now we have seen the distortion that is amplitude distortion the shape of the input should be preserved otherwise it will be called the distortion that is particularly amplitude distortion this will occur because of the incorrect biasing that is if we bias it above the q point that is into the positive that is into the towards the y axis or below the uh, q point that is towards the x axis then there will be distortion in or clipping of the peaks of the positive of cycle or the negative of cycle which will lead to the 
distortion that is amplitude distortion then we have seen the distortion same distortion will occur because of the large input signal and which is the in the output we have the amplified version of the input signal which is itself is the large signal then it leads to the clipping off because of the saturation values limits that is plus vcc and minus vcc so these two conditions should be taken care to avoid the distortion then the crossover distortion that is the practical values cutting values for silicon and germanium transistors 0.7 and 0.3 volts which are to be considered and the time taken to <coughs> going from one condition to another condition should be taken care of into these two voltages otherwise there will be crossover distortion because of the both the transistors are in off state then we have seen the heat sink concept of heat sink why we need heat sink what are the different types of heat sinks available and we have seen the different methods of mounting of this heat sink onto the transistors that is push on type and metal type type and Collector two case heat sinks. With this, we have completed today's sessions and will meet. Sir, will meet tomorrow. And if you have any doubts, please mail me at deshakul two thousand one at the gmail dot com. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. Now closing the session.